Before my friend leaves, let me just note that uh, perhaps you've forgotten that Assad uh, has had three decades of a truce with Israel, and uh, let me add that during that time, we were allied with countries that wanted to destroy Israel, our, our uh, now Saudi new friends. Uh, just wanted to, when your last statement, go, yes, please. Well, the gentleman, I mean, if the gentleman is, if, if my friend from California is suggesting that somehow it's in the best interest of the United States uh, to, to not only accept but encourage uh, a Syria run by a brutal dictator propped up by a Russian That's government. That's my statement that, was. Propped up by a Russian government that will okay. simultaneously strengthening Hezbollah and Iran uh, who that's, is an existential my, threat to Israel, I would disagree with that, okay. and uh, it okay. is in well, no one's interest. That's, that's the way to dodge my point, that you are absolutely wrong in your analysis, that Assad, over these last 30 years, has been some kind of enemy of Israel. The fact is, we have been supporting enemies of Israel for the last 30 years. Assad has had a truce, the one country where they could have had a truce, I, and I've given you a chance, okay? You didn't answer wonder, well, it. You, you, didn't, you didn't answer it. Assad is a murderous you, uh, thug, though? Mr. That, Mr. Chairman, yeah, yeah. He, I gave him his chance to answer my disagreement. He chose not to. The fact is that we have been allied with people who are much more warlike than Assad, and Assad, over these last 30 years, have been the one country in which Christians could come and seek refuge even from countries in which they were our friends, the Christians would come and seek refuge with Assad because we, they, uh, Assad was not putting up with the, with, with, the, with the persecution and destruction of the Christian community. Anything, that's what I mean by unrelenting uh, hostility. When you can't see and, and, uh, and in any way accept that or deal with it, we're going to come up with the wrong policies. Just like our friend and I, I respect uh, uh, the open uh, uh, Russia movement. I respect the, the people there struggling to get rid of the massive corruption that you have in that country. And I, uh, unfortunately, I, I don't think you're making much headway right now. And it's not just removing Putin, it's removing a lot of other people in power, the oligarchs, et cetera. But with that said, for you to suggest that the removal of Yanukovych in Ukraine was part of a democratic experience or experiment Ladies and gentlemen, you had a democratically elected government removed by force, and without that happening, I believe that Yanukovych would have been removed overwhelmingly in the next election. But in collusion with Europe and the United States, powerful forces in the Ukraine overthrew the Yanukovych regime, not allowing democracy to work. It destroyed democracy. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, I happen to be the chairman of the committee that has oversight over this part of the world. And I would never have a, uh, have a panel with at least some disagreement on the panel. And the bottom line is, you're about as close to any disagreement on it, and, and you don't. The fact is that we need to, if we're going to have peace in the world, we've got to make sure we're talking with Russia honestly and trying to confront these issues, whether it's Yanukovych or whether, it, you know, look, our, our people in, in the Middle East, they're not democratic countries. You think the Saudis are democratic countries? And the Saudis were involved with killing 3,000 Americans on 9-11. What about the Qatarans who we're talking about right now? You think they wouldn't slaughter the, 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 the large population that they have if they ever rose up against them? We have to quit trying to judge Russia on a double standard if we want peace in this world. Because we got to reach out to them and say, okay, let's be honest. What's in your interest? What's in our interest? I have to believe that peace is in, in the interest of both of our countries, especially when you've got radical Islam that is killing a bunch of Russians just like they're killing Americans. So with that said, I will ask a question, and try to get, but I am disappointed that the panel doesn't have at least one witness to try to have a dialogue about these particular issues. Uh, I, I, by the way, just for my friend, and I'm sorry uh, he's, he, he left, and I would give him a chance to, to say this as well. Look, when you complain about any type of our, this administration's relationship or, or President uh, you know, Donald Trump's relationship with, with Russia before he was president, I mean, no one's, that doesn't sound anywhere near as insidious as the tens of millions of dollars that were put into the Clinton fund. Clinton. 
you has a foundation in which the oligarchs put millions and millions of dollars in and paid her husband uh, huge sums of money into his pocket. And what happened very shortly after that? Well, we, they get a, a, a contract to have America's uranium. My gosh, no one's even mentioning it as if all the other stuff, talking to some, uh, uh, a, talking to a, uh, to an ambassador is some sort of a secret insidious thing, which it's not, and the ambassador's there for, versus exchanges of millions of dollars? No, we have got, if we want to have peace, and I think free people should be for peace. Our major goal should be for peace because peace will override and destroy lives and destroy democracy every time. And uh, I thank God that Ronald Reagan brought peace between Russia and the United States. He eliminated the Soviet Union. The Russians pulled back in the greatest peaceful removal of force in a large chunk of territory dealing with their borders in the history of humankind. And then what did we do? We didn't let them in the EU. We isolated them economically. And I, I will just say that uh, and I played little parts in this. I mentioned the thing about trying to make sure that their nuclear physicists wouldn't be working with Iran. We forced them into the into this relationship with Iran, and I will tell you one other incident, for the record, because I've been involved in this stuff. The Russians offered to back out of the agreement with the Iranians. I have this directly from players in this game, not Russians, but Americans. They, brought, they, they offered to withdraw their agreement with the Iranian uh, uh, nuclear agreement if we would work with them on developing the next generation of nuclear power which is safe and you can't melt it down, et cetera. And you know what? We turned them down. And we said, go, go play with the Iranians. So a lot of the problems we have now, I think, have been based on we have not reached out to try to work with an honest discussion of differences uh, with a country in which, yes, there are, I'm not trying to let's say that Putin is a democratic leader. He's oppressive and he's, lied, and he's tied in to, uh, he's tied, you know, oligarchs that are crooked and, and draining, draining the money from the, from the Russian people that should be used for their benefit. So uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm the only, uh, I know it sounds like, I think say, he's Putin's man, I'm not Putin's man. But I'm the only one who's willing to make the arguments on the other side and try to see that in order to create a more peaceful world. And so with that said, I'm sorry, I, I took up my whole five minutes. Uh, I, would, Thank you. I would let them refute me and I will <laughs> shut up.